So a couple weeks ago, I bought 14 motorcycles at an auction in Las Vegas, and it took a couple weeks. I don't say this might have been a huge mistake, but they finally showed up, and to my surprise, only two of them actually run. We're gonna figure out on a bike by bike basis that I make a good purchase or an awful purchase, and we're gonna try to get all these bikes running today. But first, I'm gonna need some help. <clears throat> hey, you! Be behind the wall. You know anything about motorcycles? A little bit. Come on, I need your help. I'll pay you 30 bucks for the day. Yeah, come. We'll see if this guy can help us out. I mean, sometimes you just need a warm body to, to pick up and move stuff. And I need a good uh, assistant, you know what I mean, a gopher. Like, hey, go get that wrench. Hi, I'm Craig. Hey, you know? yeah. 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 Nice to meet you. Well, I need, I need an assistant to help me with these bikes. Oh, wow. Yeah. We've got a lot of motorcycles in here. You guys might recognize Craig from the Bearded Mechanic. He is the best motorcycle mechanic out there. Actually, we do have a little bit of history together. We met once before. I met, I met you for Yeah. We jumped in the Klaus and went to the store to get a bunch of stuff that we might need, but probably don't. You good, Craig? Come on. Just like old times. And then I show Craig the one of only two bikes that actually run from the auction, my very amazing Gen 1 1986 BMW R80 GS. So this was the last bike I bought, and I kind of bought it blind. I paid $14,000 for it, and these first gen GS bikes can sell for as low as $10,000, and I've seen them as high as like $35,000. And that just depends on the miles and the condition. Now mine's got 32,000 miles on it, but it's in really good condition. The problem is I didn't know it had 32,000 miles on it because Meekum Auction, they barely show anything. At best, you might see two pictures that looks like they were taken with an Etch-a-Sketch. And most of the time, they wouldn't even tell you how many miles were on it. They wouldn't tell you how many miles were on the bike. They wouldn't tell you if it ran. They had no information about these bikes. This one's actually one of the toughest ones to appraise because not that many first gens have sold in this condition. I would value it somewhere between 12 and maybe 17,000. If we had to nail it down, let's go conservative, let's put a number at $12,000. And I gotta admit, it looks good and runs good too. Now this is my 2013 Road King 10th anniversary bike. And like the last bike, I had zero information. I didn't know the condition, I never saw it before and I didn't even know the miles on it. And I stole it for the auction price of $8,000. And when I went and saw it for the first time, the bike is beautiful, it's in perfect shape, has 7,600 miles on it, really low miles. But I would value this bike at around 14,000 bucks, making this thing a killer deal, if we can actually get it to start. Because when you turn it on... So did we buy everything we needed except batteries? Uh, no, I have lots of Okay, batteries. cool. I thought I saw you bend it out. My. Okay, we have more than we did. Okay, let's pop the air. We just need a jump. Just find a ground anywhere. Oh, God. Come on. We need. Um, ah. We need more... Cowbell? Yes. We need probably more volts to be firing the fuel injection. If we threw a new battery in there, it'll run. We need a uh, battery. They would have them at O'Reilly's. Would they? I believe so. Yes. Yes, this is right. Now, after... We spent three hours on the, the potentially the easiest bike we had to get running. It just needed two batteries. Well, we got lunch, too. We got lunch, too. All right. All right. Two down. It's 12 more to go. Oh, man, that bike feels good. Did you say I'm getting 30 bucks per day or 30 bucks per bike? 30 bucks per day. Ooh. 
I should have kept walking. Now this is the other bike that showed up actually running. It's a 2004 Yamaha MT-01, 1700cc V-twin Yamaha sport bike, which is super cool and never released in America. And it was previously owned by Corbin, the seat company, which might explain how they got this thing into the United States, because I think they used some type of trade show loophole of how they were able to get it in here. But now that it's here, it's perfectly legal to own. I could not have got this thing into the United States. And I cannot wait to ride this thing. All we have to do is bleed the front brakes and it, it should be good to go. Now I paid $7,000 for this thing, which I think is a pretty good deal. With fees and all my expenses, I was somewhere around 8,700 bucks. It's a tough bike to value, but I think at least on a conservative mark, it's worth 8,700 bucks. No break. It's a very, very interesting bike. This is a 2004 MT-01. It's a naked Street Fighter bike with a 1,700cc V-twin. Really, really cool bike. Not that cool if you're from Canada, because apparently they, they got this. How did Canada get anything that we didn't get? I don't know. Perch, this was Corbin's bike. They bought this bike so they can put, they can build this thing in the seat, which I think looks oh, this awful. Is, this is the ugly, dumbest thing ever. So you can put a sandwich back there. Looks like someone actually rode the thing. Acura Pavic exhaust, carbon fiber wheels. It was done up very nicely. I would love to find a uh, original seat for this, get this ugly thing off of there. And then- Really cool bike. It's got Behringer brakes and clutch, which the uh, this brake is smoke. Let's put it back, let's get the next one running. Now this is the bike. This is the 1986 Honda Z50 Christmas Special. Born the same year I was born. This one has never been ridden. Not sure if it ever fired up. And I paid $10,000 for it. Hold on, hold on. I know what you're thinking. That number is insane for a little tiny child's bike. I can ride that bike. I fit on that bike, for, but that, that's an insane number for a little tiny child's bike. Well, in the past six months, two of them have just sold for $25,000. So it might not be as insane as you thought it was, but let's see if it runs. I think it's the coolest looking bike ever. This one's nicer and it apparently has no, no miles, no hours. Let's see if we can get this guy running. This bike is cherry. It is really, really nice. I mean, we still have nubs on tires. Yeah, pretty easy. Super clean. You could have got a bike like this. Yeah. Christmas day. I was that kid too, like every Christmas I'd wake up thinking like one of these years there's gonna be a bike under the tree. Yeah. There never was. <laughs> no, there never is. Oh, I can't get my finger in there. I was gonna try. Uh, I have some spark plugs. Now I'm getting a little concerned. Maybe this thing's not as a uh, spring chicken as we thought it well, was. Well, you know what? If this thing was sitting, the, that carburetor is so tiny. It's very small. We're not getting any fuel. It's crazy because if you looked up a Z50 anywhere on Craigslist, Marketplace, whatever, they're not worth very much. Maybe 700 bucks, maybe 1200 bucks. If you look up this one, the 86 Chrome Christmas Special, I've seen these things sell as high as $20,000. And that wasn't a fluke. I think more it's, than it's one. It's happened multiple yeah. times. Yeah, so there's no way. <laughs> that, like I said, that, that idle circuit is so small that I don't think we'll... I don't... Wow. <laughs> Might be the most this bike ever ran. Yeah, that is so cool. I will say this, that is, that's oil from a bike that's never been ran. Or ran, ran. That's straight up dino juice. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's amazing. I love it. That is a great bike. If there's any bike that I bought that might have just saved the whole, well, the whole lot, it's that bike. Paid $10,000 for it. Next is a motorcycle that we never got in, Amer in America. And that is the, uh, this is called the Gorilla. The Z50 Gorilla. And it's pretty much the same thing as the, uh, as the Z50 and the Monkey and all those bikes. Except for it just sits up taller. Let's see if we get this thing to fire up. Oh, this is a lot more compression. Well, that sounds good too. That could be a thing. That could be a thing, yeah. And then you could adjust the bars by turning this and the whole bars come off. You could put them in or out or... That might be less for adjustment and more for uh, storage purposes. So the buyer's fees... What's uh, buyer's premium? 
Oh, that's not horrible. Minimum. I just paid 13%. Oh, at your auction? Kleinfelder's, yeah. I bought a bike for a buddy last night. And it, 13%. What'd you get him? A Jawa moped. Oh, cool. Oh, it's leaking. <clears throat> Got gum. Tap it, Craig. Give it a tap, tap, tap. It's really leaking. Still leaking? Yep. Yep. Should I try to start it? Um, I'm gonna kick it. Yep. Yeah, now we're good. <laughs> Hey! Nice! Look at that, we have our cigar indicator. So I paid $3,000 for this gorilla, and after fees and all my expenses, I'm in this thing for around 4,300 bucks. But it's not really in the shape that I thought it was in. It's the wheels don't really match, and, but it does run really, really good. And I'm pretty sure it's street legal. So I'm gonna say it's worth at least 4,000 bucks to the right buyer, which still keeps me ahead of the game, but I'm not sure how long that will last because I got some pretty big mistakes coming up. <laughs> hey, I'm riding a gorilla. Oh, oh, stay rodding. Stay rodding. I got two flat tires. That is oh, awesome. This is a neat bike. Yep. All right, so the next bike, and I don't, I, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't know why I bought it. Actually, it's awesome. Uh, it's two stroke, isn't it? Maybe. It looks like a little flat, flat head. Well, it's air cooled. No, four stroke, because it doesn't have any sort of expansion chamber on here. Yeah, right. right. And this here's, um, mm -hmm. there's probably, yeah, there's like little fan blades in there. You see that? It's like a little squirrel cage fan. Oh yeah. So that's blowing. Oh wait. Oh, okay. So then that creates air, and that's pulling air in and, and putting it across the the motor. Okay. Throwing out an idea. We know it's very simple. It's very basic. Is there no transmission in it? Is it just like you st you just start it on the stand, like, pull the clutch in, and like a moped? Yeah, maybe. That's how a moped is. You what start is you this? start it up. Well, that's very no compression. What if you pull the clutch in? This thing sounds like a little ripper. It does. Okay. Well, you want to be in the center. There it is. <laughs> wow. That's a two-stroke, isn't it? That's a two-stroke. <laughs> oh, it smells so good. Cool, cool. Such a cool little bike. I paid $850 for it with fees and shipping. I was in it for about 2,000 bucks, but in reality, it's probably worth maybe at most 1,500 bucks. It is really, really cool though, and it, it's possible it might, have a, it might have a really interesting backstory, which I have not discovered yet. But it is Italian, like Ferrari and Lamborghini, so maybe that's, a, maybe that's a thing. This next bike looked really good from stage. In person was a completely different story. And the next bike, we're gonna do is the big, beautiful V45 Honda Interceptor. It's a four cylinder V configuration, and it's a very, very cool bike. Kind of let it waft. Let it waft. I think this whole bike has been. I think the whole bike's been painted, yeah. That's not that's right. Aw that's awful looking. But I may have, uh, I may have jumped the gun when I bought this. I think it was, it was way, it seemed way too cheap. Uh, of course, we don't know if it runs. On the... Well, let's uh, hook up to a jump box. And yeah, let's see what we got. Give it the old collegiate try. Ooh. The thing on the thing will light up. When that turns, we should see some lights. Okay. That's good news. That's, heard good, that's good news. Back here. That's a thing. That could be a thing. <laughs> a choke. Mm hmm. If there's any one of these bikes, maybe with the exception of the BMW, maybe even the Harley, if you're like, Sean, I want to buy that bike off you, shoot me an email. This is dripping fuel. That's oh, yeah, funny. That's, look, yeah, starts, yep. So it's getting fuel. Oh, it's nasty fuel though, man. I don't know if it's going to run on that stuff. Huh. <laughs> 
Go ahead. Running off the gas. Which ones aren't running? Did it. Did it. Bike is fixed. <laughs> Call me a mechanic. For sale, only ridden on Sundays. Totally for sale. All it needs is a mirror ready to ride. The V45 was a huge disappointment. I paid 1500 bucks for it on stage. When all said and done, I was in it for about 2900 bucks. I think it's worth at least 1500 bucks to the right person. Maybe it's for parts, but it, it, was, not, it was not that good looking of a bike. So 20 feet away, it looks pretty good though. Now let, let's go to the next bike, which I'm sure you're gonna see why I'm so excited about this thing as long as it actually works. Trials bike. Heck yeah, the Alp. I'm excited about this. Also, I've been tossed around the idea of me and Craig going to like a trial school. Mm. Learning how to trials ride. I'd love to learn how to trials ride. It has a um, odometer, speedometer. It goes to do 120. Right. <laughs> <laughs> 120. 120 miles on my... This final drive ratio. Yeah. But yeah, that's not gonna happen. A super cool vintage A-Stars sticker. Dude, that much compression? It's got a lot of compression. Hey! hey, hey. Ah, look, no clutch. Oh, no clutch. Okay, the clutch doesn't work. Go this way. Go. So the master, the clutch cylinder, the master cylinder is shot. Uh, so we couldn't get it in gear for him just to pull out, but a little push. Yeah, get that stance. Look all trialsy. This is fun. I kind of wish I had a clutch. I would feel a little more uh, confident. Hey, Craig, jump on it. There's no seat. <laughs> I forgot there's no seat. I love that bike. Let's put it back in. Let's get the next one running. At first glance, I stole this thing. $1,400 for a Trials motorcycle. And with fees and everything, I'm in it for around $2,500. Bucks, which I thought, was, I thought I was doing pretty good. But the Trials bikes aren't that valuable. It is cool though, but just not that valuable. I think in reality, it might be worth $1,400, $1,500. But I might be saved by this bike. The next bike is possibly one of the coolest bikes I got for the cheapest price. I think I paid 1300 bucks for it. The 350BW is a very hard bike to find. They're awesome. It looks like this thing was being ridden recently. So the 350s were pretty rare. Yeah. And they're awesome. I ain't dumb if it works, right? I imagine that's what it's like driving like the Batman bike. The back tire is so wide. Pretty cool. Kids, choose your friends wisely and choose your shipping company even more wisely. The first shipping company I booked, I got off of U-Ship and they had pretty decent reviews. Let's call them Thrasher Trucking because that's what their name was. I told them I, need, I have 14 motorcycles that need to be picked up in Vegas and transferred to Tennessee. And I think at this point they had around five days to, to get it done. But if they're not picked up by Sunday, I'm gonna accrue an extra $2,000 fee. So you gotta get it before Sunday. They said, no problem. But strangely, and I didn't know any better, 
Strangely, they asked for half down. Kids, lesson number two, never pay half down for anything that's getting shipped. At most, release half the funds when they pick up the item, or better, just pay for the whole thing whenever it gets delivered. Because their truck broke down. Now the truck broke down pretty quickly and they still had a couple days to fix it. So I was like, okay, they'll, they'll get it fixed. There were serious circumstances that never got fixed. I missed the deadline. I had to pay another $2,000. And the truck's already been broke down for a couple days. It's gotta be getting fixed soon. Well, it, they were running out of time. It was almost getting to the deadline where I had to pay another $2,000 for another week of storage. So I was forced to get another trucking company. Now listen, I understand. Stuff breaks down, that happens, things happen. But you have a responsibility to your customer. So I was like, listen, Give me my deposit back. We will go our separate ways and then I'll, I'll get someone else. Well, nope. They refused to give me my deposit back. That name again is Thrasher Trucking. I think we're gonna be trying to get that rotary bike running. Well, we're on a roll. We are on a roll. Uh, just, also, push that, just push it back in line. Let's go for sushi. <laughs> it sounds horrible. <clears throat> Does sound horrible. Also, there's no, uh, no front brake. No front brake. No clutch nope. cable. That's a cable clutch. I'm told by my friend Jay Leno from a video that I watched that these are incredibly smooth motorcycles. The rotary engine is just gold wing smooth. Oh, hey, look at this. See what that does. Cold start video. Oh, shoot. <laughs> hey, that's pretty cool. 145, I'm gonna throw it out there. These don't look like guys I want to buy bikes from. The, that's this bike. It's it's it's, it's 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 his exact bike. First of all, they did not they did not prove that that it was actually a cold start from that video. Right. Nothing about that bike was. No one was licking the exhaust header. That's what I do. I, I lay my tongue on the exhaust header before I start every video. That's how you prove a cold start. It's the sound effects that help. Mm. Oh man, what a gosh awful emblem. Oh, it's so ugly. Yeah, well that's the engine. Uh, yeah, I, I know what it is. All it rotary is. bikes will put that stupid logo. You don't see pistons all over uh, right. normal bikes. Yeah. There wasn't fuel in there, was there? No, it was pretty, pretty dry. You ever, get a, you ever get a face slash eyes full of gasoline thrown in your face on the hottest day of your life when you're wearing a full race suit? You ever, you ever, you ever experienced that? You hang around Craig enough, you will. Yeah. <laughs> and the small gas can was sitting in the sun for a while, so it got like, and then like, I just wasn't thinking we're at the track and I went to put gas in something and I bled off the pressure and I didn't realize Sean's face was like, I don't know why he was staring into the nozzle. I was staring at like, like wide open too. Yeah, that's that guy. Oh. Why do none of these bikes have batteries? They <laughs> pulled all the batteries to take them to the parts store for the $10 core charges. Why would they make a cold start video? Take the fuel line off. Pull the battery Pull out. the battery out. I feel like we've been swindled. <laughs> yeah. And the deeper and deeper we looked, the worse the bike got. Oh, well, that doesn't go anywhere. That doesn't go anywhere. <clears throat> These don't go anywhere. This doesn't go anywhere. This doesn't go anywhere. This doesn't go anywhere. Nothing about this bike is put together. Oh, it's got a gear position uh, indicator. <laughs> ah, I like it again. <laughs> yeah, this <laughs> bike's yeah, sweet. Yeah. Look, it's got a metallic paint job. Yeah, I like it again. It has its own oil tank. It does. And it has oil P. Oil dot P. For them long runs. Yeah. You know who might be able to get it running? Who? Oh. The bearded mechanic. <laughs> I was so excited about this motorcycle because I hear they're such, they're very, very smooth bikes. I've never ridden a rotary. I've never ridden a rotary anything. I don't think I've ever been in an RX-7 or a rotary bike. So I was pumped about, about buying this bike and I thought I stole it at 3750 until, until of course I saw the bike. So with fees and everything, I'm in this thing for around 5,000 bucks. What's it worth? I best maybe 1500 bucks. There's a few special bikes that we didn't show and for a good reason. One is the Honda Motra, which I'm very, very concerned about because it feels like it has no compression. And if you wanna see what happens to that bike, go to the Bearded Mechanic channel where me and Craig do our thing. But before I show you the secret bike underneath the tarp, which I am the most, I'm so excited about this bike. I wanna throw something out. This, this auction thing is kinda, kinda getting to me. Um, so I've been thinking lately and I wanna hear some feedback from you guys. I might start my own auction. Why not? Why not start my own auction? 
with very clear fees, very clear descriptions, you know, curated motorcycles with video showing that they run and, 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 and their conditions and all this stuff. You would know more about that bike from looking at that auction than you could just, you know, looking at it. I'm thinking about starting an auction. I want to see what you guys think about it. There was also a 1929 Harley Davidson I bought at this auction. I'm going to go to my buddy the Wheels Through Time because that could have been the biggest mistake in my life or the greatest investment of my life. But for now, let's go see the bike under that tarp. So I saved the best for last. I've been looking for one of these for a long time. I've had a couple. Never should have sold them. I think it's one of the coolest bikes ever made. That is the Honda Rune. I know it looks like it's been in a barn for the past uh, 12 years. It was just in, I think this all came from being inside um, Hall Bikes Warehouse. Dusty as anything, it's gross looking. Let's see if it starts. That's good news. 8,900 miles. One of the best motorcycles I've ever ridden. Very unique experience to ride this thing. I love this bike. We'll see you guys next time and go check out the Bearded Mechanics YouTube channel. Craig has a ton of awesome videos and eventually he's probably gonna get that guy running and that Honda race bike.